Now, how is all this done, you ask? The Legend of Sleepy Howell was a drive through laser light show experience held in Howell, Michigan on October 23rd through 24th, 2020. Normally, this is a celebration held in downtown Howell as a trick-or-treat event. But the pandemic changed their plans, so they started looking for something they could do as a contactless drive through event in Schofield Park. They found us via our website and the planning began. The shows sold out quickly. At the entry, the standard laser warnings appeared, along with instructions to stay in your cars, etc. The live music soundtrack was broadcast to car radios. Preparation for this installation started in late July 2020 and proceeded right up to installation on October 22nd. Maps were created, diagrams were drawn and redrawn, and screens were fabricated. The master map was created from a Google Earth image. This is a diagram showing the rotating Halloween puppets in the pavilion. This shows the wiring for the pavilion. A diagram for the setup of dances with lasers. Entrance layout. Illuminata's fabricator Zeta Gillis designed and created the screens. A 9 by 21 foot screen for the entrance, a 9 by 12 footer for dances with lasers, a 9 by 9 screen for the vortex, and a 66 by 9 foot monster for the pavilion. Mike has shown banging in the grommets into the screens. A fog chiller was designed for the drums and lasers area, using a trash can and ductwork powered by an inline duct fan. Six custom drums and lasers projectors were built, along with a console to control them. Here are the extruded aluminum housings for the drums and laser projectors. This is the DNL control console under construction. Using Euro rack format, all the aluminum panels were cut and drilled by Mike. Laser lunchbox and were revised and tested. Here is a view of St. Wilfred's Lumentic Institute, headquarters for Illuminatus lasers. Piles of gear awaiting loadout. Road cases await loadout. These are the LNT projectors and cables on their way to the pavilion. The cables are custom made eight conductor and used throughout Illuminatus gear. We started setting up on October 22nd, getting the screens in place at the entrance, dances with lasers, pavilion, and vortex areas. The cherry picker was used to install the entrance screen, which hung between two trees above the road into the park. Production guru Tom Bray designed and directed its installation, which relied on wire rope and cable clamps. Bradley Cross is seen here assembling the canopy tent that will protect musician Ken Kazara, who will be stationed on the stage in the background. The crew from Complete Production Services assembled the various crank towers that supported the screens and the projectors at the entrance. These were Global Truss ST-180s. The towers placed the screen's lower edges three meters above the ground level. The towers were ballasted with 50-gallon drums filled with lake water. Here is the tower that will support the two projectors at the entrance. The large projector on the left was a 6-watt loner from LaserNet, and the other was a 5-watt Clubcat. Meanwhile, Illuminats Wayne, Tom, Bradley, and Zeta hung the massive screen around the pavilion. Bradley is shown steadying Tom, who is standing on a dangerously small ladder we brought. Here is the completed pavilion screen, surrounded by fall foliage and ready for puppets and lasers. Tom installed the FM broadcaster into the rafters and ran 300 feet of stereo balanced cables to Ken's audio setup. The lower attachments for the screen had to be installed on site due to them attaching to the support pipes. The ILDA award winning lunchbox controllers were deployed and wired into the LNT projectors. The LNT Lumia projectors await activation. LNT stands for Lazing Nung Tulung, an installation that Illuminatus did at the Gleam Art Light Festival in 2018 in Madison, Wisconsin. Bradley adjusts the giant spider puppet. The completed setup awaits sundown. The Dancing with Lasers performance area, lit by homebrew LED strip lights and UV LEDs. Screen for the Vortex, 
Zeta created the fabric and handed it off to CPS, who created a custom frame for it. The restricted area around the vortex, showing the canopy for the operators, the white canopy protects the musician's stage. Meanwhile, back at the entrance, now that it is dark, cars entered the park, passing under the large screen suspended between the two trees. An image of the galloping headless horseman by laser designer Nisha Ramnath led off the presentation, which included welcome notices and thank you messages to sponsors via scrolling text and logos, as well as Halloween imagery. Lovebook was a major Illuminatus sponsor, as was Harmony Hollow. Steve and Ben Rich ran this part of the event. The lasers were controlled by Pangle and Beyond using both an FB3 for the laser net unit and an onboard FB4 on the club cap projector. Fog generators throughout the show provided for a spooky environment. At the entrance, these were irradiant VF1500s. One projector handled the scrolling text and the other did the logos and other images. Dancing with Lasers was a main attraction at the Legend of Sleepy Hollow 2020. Dancing skeletons controlling lasers with their movements. This is usually an audience participation event, but with social distancing we used howl dancers in skeleton suits to perform before our sensor. The dancers danced to the music Ken was broadcasting, hearing it via a boombox in the control tent. The images from the Kinect are sent to the laptop loaded with Beyond Ultimate software, which is capable of making mirror images and colorizing them. The Lumia background is provided by two of our custom PVC Lumiators. This is the dance area with an outdoor carpet used to protect the dancers' feet. The road through the park was lined with jack-o'-lanterns and rope lights to direct the cars while keeping the ambient light down. Proceeding down the road through the park, the next apparition is the Haunted Pavilion. The show was an adaptation of Lazing Nung Tulum. There we used Thai shadow puppets for rotational elements. Here we used spooky Halloween decorations to cast scary shadows on the enormous screen surrounding two sides of the pavilion on top of the hill. We had a trio of smaller displays along the route to fill in some gaps and provide additional Lumia fun. We tacked smaller screens along the portion of the split rail fence next to the road and rear projected swirling Lumia onto them. Our production partner, CPS, provided uplights to illuminate the trees in the area. These were DMX LED fixtures on a self-contained color cycle program. The Headless Horseman's entry into our dimension is via a wormhole called the Vortex. The Vortex is a combination of Neon Captain radiator output and Nisha Ramnath imagery. Illuminatus Chief Engineer Wayne Gillis ran the radiator through a Kvant Club Max 3000 and the Horseman was run by Pangolin Quickshow software and projected by custom prototype X-Laser projector built by Bob Snyder. The projection was terminated on a screen that was created by Zeta Gillis, our fabricator. It rained at one point. Here is a shot from below the beamage. The radiator output is on the left, the horseman on the right. Drums and Lasers is a custom-built electronic optical laser system designed and built by Illuminatus Lasers director Mike Gould, assisted by Illuminatus chief engineer Wayne Gillis and machinist Bill Witcher. The intent is to create laser beams that pulsate in time to signals received from electronic drums or drum sensors hit by participants at a light art festival. A hit on the drum produces a Lisa Zhu twitch in the laser being projected, in this case down the hill. Bill Witcher devised and deployed the fog system for the hill. He used our venerable F100 fogger, the output of which was run through an ice cube chiller system built into a large bin. From there, the fog went to a manifold and split into two streams, each feeding a long smoke sausage made of tubular plastic film. The Hill of Beams was the grand finale for the show. We had 14 lasers beaming away up the hill, and the new drums and lasers apparatus firing six twitching beams down the hill, all terminating on the ground. We also used our custom linear diffractor, which is called Fanboy. This is oriented vertically, producing beams that march up the hill to intersect with the drums and lasers output. 
The diffractor is a Mikado grating that we got from John Robertson, reportedly used in the original Laserian. Rehearsal night, we got lucky. The entire park was socked in with fog, providing great beamage. Following nights were not so great with variable winds, but the foggers worked for the most part. It takes a village. Here are the Illuminats from left to right. Tom Bray, production manager. Ken Kazara, musician and composer. Bradley Cross, puppet and screen wrangler. Wayne Gillis, chief engineer. Zeta Gillis, fabricator in logistics. Tim Prosser, lunchbox supervisor. Draco, drone pilot and crew member. Ben Rich, crew. Jacob Rich, crew. Steve Rich, consigliere and luminary. Bill Witcher, chief machinist and fogmeister. Missing, Bob Snyder, crew. Seated is Mike Gould in charge. Illuminatus Lasers. Runs with lasers. Hey, hey, hey.